Hi, my name is Ibi. I'm in the QUT School of Nursing and I'm going to demonstrate to you today how to insert a nasogastric tube. To assemble a nasogastric tube, you need to think about the equipment that's going to be used. First of all, we need a little bit of lubricant gel. We need to select the tube and the main three that are used is a very fine bore feeding tube that may be used for long-term feeding. We may have a bigger tube that's called, known as a Salem sump tube that is used to decompress the stomach of air or bowel contents or we have a more common nasogastric tube that looks like this and this is the one we're going to insert today. We need a 50ml syringe, we need some pH paper, not litmus paper, it has to be more specific. We need a measuring tape for after we've inserted it, we'll need some gloves for ourselves. We may need some sterile water if it's a fine bore tube to just irrigate through but we don't need that today because we're going to use this nasogastric tube. We may need a spigot or an air valve, a vomit bowl for our patient, a glass of water and a straw. If the patient is able to drink and they're conscious, we need some kind of fixative. So it may be some tape or in some hospitals you will have nice little dressings that are purposely made. And we'll need some kind of way of washing our hands and some gloves. So I'm ready to put in my nasogastric tube. I've already explained to my patient what I'm going to do. I've got informed consent and I should have a medical order for this procedure. So I've positioned my patient sitting upright with his, I'm going to ask him to put his chin on his chest because that is a better position because it opens the glottis and um, I'm going to ask him also, I would normally have another person here helping who would be giving the patient a drink of water. Not all patients can be sitting up, not all patients can cooperate with this position and not all patients are able to swallow the water if they're milled by mouth. So you need to individualise how you're going to approach that. But this is the ideal. Okay, so before I'm going to put the tube into the patient, I need to think about how far I'm going to progress it. So the, the usual measurement is from the nostril to the ear, the ear lobe, and then down to the ziffy sternum, which is down the bottom here. And that's the approximate measurement. So then I would mark or have a fair idea that, that that is the part. So you can mark it with some tape or with an indelible pen. So then I'm going to lubricate. So I'm getting a nice bit of lubricant or it could be sterile water. That'll do the job as well. And I come to my patient. Now I've got my patient positioned nicely. He's got his mouth full of water. I'm going to start progressing into the, the nostril. So I tell my patient what I'm doing. So I'm going to start passing the tube. Now when I get in here, I'm not pointing up and I don't want to be pointing straight back. I want to just be hooking it nicely so it progresses. This doesn't feel too bad for the patient at this point. It's when we hit the gag reflex and the epiglottis further down. So my patient's got his mouth full of water. So if he can and he's helping me, I'm going swallow, 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 swallow. Swallow, 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 swallow. And I've now got that to the length that I determined. I need to check inside the mouth. I might need a little torch if I do, just to make sure that it's not curled up in the back of their mouth. Um, and at this point, I would secure my nasogastric tube, perhaps temporarily, because I've still got to check the position. So I'll just do that like so for the minute, just until I've checked the position and then I'll tape it all nicely. I've got my nasogastric tube in place, I've taped it and I want to use it. It is absolutely vital that I know that this nasogastric tube is in the stomach and not in the patient's lungs or curled up in the back of their throat or not far down enough. So there are several ways of checking the position, some of the outdated ways that should not be used and are not informed by practice but you may see in use and please do not use these are to inject air in and listen. We know that that can be confused with the air going into the lungs, it's not a definitive way of checking position. Others have put the end in water and believe if there's air bubbles that it's in the lung but the way that it should be measured according to evidence is to pull back some gastric juices 
from the um, stomach and then to test with litmus paper. So the specific pH paper that is used for this process, it is not the same as the paper that you use for urine testing pH. It is more specific. And you will see there that I've got a colour change. And I want my pH to be 4 or less in an adult. 5 is acceptable for a child. No, 5 for an adult, 4 for a child. So you can see clearly that that matches. If it were not specifically that pH, then I have a risk of it being in the lung. Sometimes you will x-ray or get an x-ray to, to check the position. Another way of knowing that my tube, once I've determined that it's in the stomach, that it hasn't moved, is to know the external length. How many centimetres are actually outside the patient and recording this? In this case, it's 71 centimetres. My tube should not migrate inside the body. It can't come out of the stomach and go back into the lungs, but it can slip up and down the tape, which could position it higher and, of course, provide a problem of potential aspiration if I were to put fluid down that. This should be done every shift. Sometimes if I'm going to do a continuous feed, I will use a machine to pump the feed. The most commonly ones used are the kangaroo pumps. They're very easy to use. So I turn it on. And then I've got to, it's just going to go through the settings. So now we need to thread the line through the pump. So I'm going to open the side and I'm just going to fit the connector and twist him up like so and close the door. Very easy. So I've got my pump turned on, I've got my line in, I'm going to clear my settings. I need to prime it because I do not want to pump a whole lot of air into my patient, so it's just a matter of pressing prime and holding until I see fluid and then I go done. Now I'm going to adjust the feed, so I would need to consult my order, have my second person here to check. I would have obviously checked what feed I had. I'm going to adjust feed. I've got feed rate, and then I can just enter my numbers. So in this case, I'm going to give 210 mils an hour, so I want to give quite a bit of feed, and then I'm just going to press enter and run. So once again, I'd just like to emphasise that I've got a doctor's order for my feed. I've done my checks. I'm going to hook up my patient. But it is absolutely critical that prior to making this connection, that even though I just put that tube in, that I have rechecked the position so that I know that this feed will run into the patient's stomach and not their lungs. Ongoing nursing responsibilities when I have a patient with a nasogastric tube are to check the position every single time I access it. I need to also check my patient and make sure they're not developing any pressure injuries, keep their nasal passages clear, and I will need to evaluate their response if I'm giving a feed to the extra hydration and um, have them on a fluid balance chart. Uh, there's actually no infection risk from having a nasogastric tube, but we would definitely monitor all those vital signs that go along with the hydration status.